Hello, this is uh, Dr. John Green with Rodox.com, a telemedicine corporation. I'm an emergency medicine specialist and have been for the past 38 years. In those years, I've come across many interesting scenarios and cases for which I would like to share with you. But before we get started on today's case, let me say I would like for you to know three things by the end of this short video. One, Strider. Number two, cricothyroidotomy. And number three, HIV vaccine. Okay, let's get started. The gentleman was talking with the nurse in kind of a hoarse voice when I overheard him say he had a sore throat that came on all of a sudden. So sore throats, we see them all the time. She put him in a room far away at the end of the hallway. About 15 minutes later, he came out unable to speak, having strider. And strider is like trying to breathe in through a very tiny straw. <laughs> so remember that anytime you hear that sound of strider, the person's airway is almost completely closed off. This is different than wheezing where it's mostly in the chest. The strider is in the upper airway. All right, so he came out of the room unable to speak, and he suddenly collapsed in front of the nursing station. Fortunately, we had a number of people around and were able to roll out a stretcher and get him up on the stretcher and into the trauma code room. At that point, a, one of the emergency medicine residents attempted to intubate him, but said they could not see the airway. Anesthesia during the day is part of the Dr. Dan team. And he came and he told me he could not see the airway. He could not get a tube in to help him breathe. At that point, our choices were few and we had a short time to do it. And that is to make a surgical incision into the neck below the Adam's apple, make it about just a inch long and you punch it through and you will hear suddenly a large amount of air escape. This is called a cricothyroidotomy. And when you have to use it, it's almost always life-saving. It's a life-threatening condition the person has that their upper airway is blocked and they can't get air in and maybe not out. So let's talk about what occurred. One of the things that you have to be concerned about when someone is unable to speak and obviously can't get any air in is an upper airway obstruction due to food impaction. If someone, if he had been sitting at the table, especially eating certain things like big uh, chunks of meat, he didn't cut his meat up very well, and then suddenly grabbed his neck and couldn't speak, think of a uh, food impaction. And let me show you what you would do with that. Now with that, you want to push enough air out so that whatever piece of food is lodged in there will come out. And the way to do it is called a Heimlich maneuver. You take it and push in as hard as you can until the food comes out. You can try slapping on the back if nothing else works, and I will let the pediatrician show you what to do with children. But you really should know that because it does happen uh, frequently. But this was different. What was different? Immediately, um, we 
noted that he's an adult with a sore throat, high fever. We had to think of ep epiglottitis. Now, epiglottitis is an infection of the epiglottis. The epiglottis is a piece of tissue in the upper airway or throat that blocks off the airway when you're swallowing food. That way you won't get food down the airway. You know how, what a problem that is whenever you get food down the airway. And that's where your mother always told you, do not eat and talk at the same time. Because as you're breathing and talking, the uh, epiglottis doesn't know what to do. And the next thing you know, there's a piece of food or something down the airway. Okay. Epiglottis was a uh, fairly common and it usually occurs in infants with and it would come on very rapidly they would have a very high fever cry drool and the throat would be infected but it would be something different about this infection and uh, epiglottitis would be the diagnosis but we don't see it in children very often at all now, the um, reason is there's a vaccine that came out in the mid-80s called HIV vaccine. It's Haemophilus influenza B. That was the name of the bacteria. Even though it says in its name, influenza, it is not a virus. It's a bacteria that can cause swelling, inflammation, and it swells up quickly and it will block off the airway. And it was, a, I won't say common, but it was not unheard of uh, among children before the mid eighties. It was not as common in adults, but um, it, it occurs in adults, usually in many of the same symptoms, but it's a slower process of coming on. Okay, uh, that is our case for today. And I uh, thank you for listening. This is Dr. John Green, Rodox.com.